Episode 11, Anger for Her. Dante slowly pulled the trigger. His body language made clear how angry he was at that moment. Dante aimed at Mr. Sebastian's foot and shot him. Mr. Sebastian's cries echoed throughout the hall. The sound of the gunshot instantly drew those inside the Avalon Club out. Everyone stood on the stairs and looked at the people below. When they saw Mr. Sebastian lying on the ground, they all thought that Dante was a gangster. Scarlet was woken up at the sound of the gunshot. Scarlet thought that Renfrey's reputation would be ruined, and she was in a good mood. Scarlet, what was that sound outside? Matthew asked, why don't we go take a look? Amber said. Then Ron also woke up. He looked at Scarlet and smiled gently. Let's go out and take a look, and I'll take you home. Ron said, all right. Scarlet nodded. After everyone left, they saw that the entire Evelyn's club main hall was filled with people. Could it be that the police are here? Matthew asked, curious. I think so. Amber said. Scarlet thought Renfrey was discovered and wanted to go down to see what she looked like now. Let's go down and take a look. Scarlet asked. Ron looked at Scarlet and shook his head helplessly. Then he agreed. Matthew and Amber also followed Scarlet down. They too were very curious about what had happened. Even the police were there. When Scarlet and the others went down, they saw Dante beating up Mr. Sebastian. Scarlet's heart tightened. She didn't see Renfrey. Matthew, look. Those men are very handsome. Amber said, I saw them too. Matthew said, why is that person wearing a mask? A male student asked, he must be ugly. Matthew said with disdain, Scarlet, there's nothing to see here. Let's go home, Ron said. Although Scarlet wanted to see Renfrey's appearance, Ron had already spoken. She could not refuse. Ron and I are leaving. I'll treat you guys to a meal when I have time, Scarlet said. In that case, we'll leave too, Matthew said. After that, Ron left with a few other people. As Ron was leaving, he turned his head and looked at Dante. Coincidentally, Dante also saw Ron. Ron couldn't forget the rage in Dante's eyes and his mocking smile. Dante looked down at Mr. Sebastian, who was lying on the ground. His eyes were fierce. He turned to Alfred and said, This is your place. Take care of it yourself. Otherwise, I'll tear all of this down. All right, Alfred said. He knew that Dante was a man of his word. Everyone watched Dante and the others leave. They also left one after another. Mr. Sebastian, still lying on the ground, was taken away by Zion. The night's events would definitely become the headlines in Phoenix City the next day. Dante went to his private room and carefully hugged Renfrey. He reached out and touched her cheek lovingly. His eyes were full of emotion. I'll take you home, Dante said in a soft voice. Harold and Tony did not speak. They just quietly followed behind Dante. After Dante arrived at the royal mansion, Alfred brought his medical kit to examine Renfrey's body. Who's so cruel to give her poison? Give her the antidote, Dante ordered. Alfred looked at Dante's worried face. He turned around and took out a small bottle from the medical kit. He then used a syringe to inject the antidote into Renfrey's arm. After that, Mrs. Walter walked in with Renfrey's pajamas. Only when Renfrey was at his house would he let a servant into his bedroom. Young master, I'll help Miss Renfrey wash up. Mrs. Walter said softly, You have to be careful, Dante said in a deep voice. Yes, Mrs. Walter said respectfully. Dante went downstairs to the living room. He lit a cigarette. He didn't have an addiction to nicotine and usually did not smoke. Tony and I only left for a couple of weeks. What happened? Harold asked seriously. Yes, tell us, please, Tony said. Alfred sat off to the side and looked at them. Although he knew some stories, he didn't tell them. Did you all see it? Dante didn't answer. When Harold and Tony heard what he said, their faces instantly became serious. Are you sure? Harold asked. Don't forget your identity, Tony advised. Harold, Tony, she saved Dante's life. Alfred suddenly said, What? Harold asked, 
She was the one who saved Dante when he was attacked, Alfred replied. Could this woman be a spy that the enemy planted by his side on purpose? Tony said. Tony knew Dante very well. He said this only for Dante's safety. He didn't want his friend making the same mistake twice. You guys are thinking too much, Alfred said. It seems you've already decided that she will be Dante's woman. Harold said abruptly. What Dante said next left them all speechless. She'll be my wife and a part of my family. Harold and Tony looked at Dante in shock, but Alfred was calm. Through his recent observation of Dante, he felt that this would happen sooner or later. Have you thought it through? Harold asked seriously. Dante put down the cigarette in his hand and turned to look at Harold and the others. Yes, Dante said firmly. All right, since you've said so, what else can we say? Tony said with a smile. Our Renfrey's only 18 this year. Compared to her, you're a little old. When Dante heard Alfred's words, his face turned ashen. This was the first time he'd cared so much about his age. So what? Dante said coldly. What if that girl doesn't want to marry you? Harold said with a smile. Dante heard what they said and smiled faintly.